Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Rockets. In this episode, I sit down and talk with OTBX, Huntsville's premier craft beer and wine retailer. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, my name is Joshua Welker. Uh, I'm the general manager of OTBX uh, here in downtown Huntsville. And uh, I run this place. Uh, we try to uh, try to you know keep the place stocked and full and uh, packed whenever we can and always searching for uh, some of the better beers uh, that we can get a hold of. So. When did the idea for OTBX first come about? Uh, well, I wasn't there for the beginning, uh, but the idea started uh, probably about seven years ago. Uh, the, uh, the guys that uh, currently own it, um, as the, the craft beer uh, uh, law is starting to change, essentially wanted a place that they could hang out uh, and uh, introduce a lot of beers that were previously actually illegal in Alabama. Mm and uh, just kind of have a central hub uh, for beer nerds and people who are, are were just finding out about the craft beer scene uh, to be able to come in, socialize, get educated. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it was, it was kind of uh, just their brainchild and wanted a place to hang out with like-minded folks. You talk a little bit about the like the craft beer scene at that time. Was was there other people doing what OTBX was doing at the time, or was OTBX kind of like a newfound thing in Huntsville? Um, well, I was actually living in California when this was happening, but I was actually following uh, what was happening uh, down at the state legislature uh, through a group called uh, Free the Hops, uh, as well as uh, I was very aware of uh, OTBX when it opened. Um, you know, I guess it was, it was about seven years ago. Uh, there's quite a few beers that were actually illegal in the state. Hmm. And uh, it was basically capped off at a certain uh, alcohol level. And uh, craft beer tends to be a little bit on the higher side. I, I believe the cutoff was about 6%. And, you know, half decent IPA is going to start <laughs> at 7 Yeah. Uh, so there was uh, quite a few beers that, that you couldn't even have in the state. And uh, so when, when OTBX opened, this was kind of the... F- the first place in Huntsville that was really focused on curating those beers uh, and kind of, kind of having uh, them available to the public. So the process of OTBX kind of coming to Huntsville, it, was, it seemed like it was kind of a, like offering something that Huntsville one didn't have and one that yeah. the state itself really couldn't really offer at the time. It was just kind of a place for people to hang out and you can tell from the environment right now, I mean, it's very much a chill atmosphere. Like you're able to have a variety of different options to choose from either retail or draft options. Was, is, has the location of Hunts of OTBX and with all the construction going on downtown limited the growth of OTBX over the last couple of months with the parking garage going right out front? Uh, I, I don't want to say that it's limited the growth any more than any kind of construction projects can be. It's, I mean, certainly it was, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge that we've had to, uh, had to address head on. And of course, this was really kind of getting ramped up in the middle of COVID. Uh, there's a lot going on. So, um, you know, like a lot of other places we're we are, you know, trying to make do with what's going on. Um, but, uh, I mean, it, when you look at the construction, uh, and if you guys don't know what's going on, there's a beautiful new uh, parking deck. Uh, right that's almost <laughs> almost done. Almost done. We're uh, maybe five six weeks away from that oh, being wow. completed. Um, that's being built right across the street and where our, our original parking lot was, which is kind of a gravel lot. Um, and yeah, I mean it's been a challenge, uh, but ultimately Huntsville is growing at such a pace downtown really needs more parking needs more office space uh if you guys aren't aware there's also going to be some retail on that first floor Mm -hmm. um and that's at least in my mind is going to expand what people think of downtown huntsville uh previously it was kind of just built in mentally that it was the square (laughs) and maybe half a block either way and there's all parallel parking no parking garages that's it right and we you know we're kind of on the very outskirts of that so we're excited about it i mean it's been something that that um Certainly, we've had to kind of uh, be patient with, but um, you know what's going to happen in five, six weeks is, as as Huntsville physically expands the downtown uh, and and sort of that business district, uh, it's going to be amazing. See, at the beginning of uh, OTBX, uh, you, you mentioned that you you weren't actually com- uh, here in Huntsville during the time, but uh, I mean the, the craft the craft beer scene was something that was definitely up and coming. It wasn't something that people as as today can just go around and go to different breweries, walk downtown i mean you can you can hit three or four different breweries in a a, a span of five miles Uh, Um, how has the growth of huntsville's craft brewery scene really impacted and helped otbx continue to grow um it's it's funny because you know over time there's actually been more competition um but i think otbx um 
I think they kind of set the standard when they first opened about how to curate beers, have a, uh, a really wide selection that a lot of people can come in. And then uh, first and foremost, I, I think the, the, the staff is so highly educated on beer and we're working on wine as well. We've got a couple of people who are working on their, their, uh, their level one sommelier, uh, myself included. Uh, and I think that's sort of the, the, the crux in terms of, of product that makes us stand out mm-hmm. is that we've got people who, you know, who, who, number one, we've got regulars that know that they can come in and ask questions and, and ha- you know, have answers from the staff. Uh, and then we've also sort of curated um, kind of a, an atmosphere here of sort of that downtown neighborhood bar. Definitely. And it's, it's in, uh, one of the big things you mentioned is just the knowledge that the staff has. I mean, it's not just a place you can come and just hang out and just have your like your favorite beer, but like and it is at the same point. But it's also is, hey, I want to learn more about different breweries, different beer. And is that the big part is not just having a space that's fun and, and a cool place to hang out, but it's also the education part of it. Yeah. I, and I think there's there's um, uh, there's a bit of a spread there that. You, you, we don't want it to be off-putting, like people are intimidated to come in, because it's certainly not that place at all. You can come in and just have a really nice lager and not, you know, feel like there's a bunch of beer snobs yeah. that are going to talk down to you. Uh, we've we've got that, but we also try to, you know, have that weird thing that people are looking for or have heard about, because um, we certainly serve both sides of the, of the of the population. You've got people who are just passive beer drinkers and they want to come in do something different here's what i normally drink have the bartender go hey if you like that you're gonna love this try this and let it be that Mm -hmm. versus i do got some beer snobs that come in and know you know everything about it everything about (laughs) it and so i'd better be on my toes same thing with you know the staff so and so as if if someone was to come into otbx uh, they can expect a place that's just incredible to be able to sit around and just hang out have a beer with your friends but it's also a place you can learn and you said the wine is something that you're growing into what is the plan for what the wine is going to look like and what other options people could expect to see when they come into otbx yeah um you know you go to the grocery store there's a pretty good selection and there's actually you know people kind of you know, use that as a sort of derogatory term like well that's you know grocery store wine but the fact of the matter is kroger's got some pretty decent yeah. wines um so what what we're doing currently and what we're going to expand on is is finding some of those wines that um that you might not be able to find at at a kroger or um you know just a, a, a kind of a package store um you know i've got a couple of good selections back right behind me here of uh, natural wines um i you know i've got some cool wines coming out of italy out of uh, south africa uh, i've got some cool wines uh that come out of argentina uh, whereas I think most people, if they're not a wine aficionado, they, they kind of think, you know, France, California. Yes. And we certainly carry some of that, but this is an opportunity to come in and go, hey, you know, I like, um, you know, uh, a French Bordeaux. And then have someone go, you know what, if you like that, take a look at this. I want you to give it a try and, you know, let me know what you think. Definitely. So is the, so can people currently come in and even get a glass of wine too, and a, or a beer, or is that, or is it more of the sales to go? Is your is your wine selection? Uh, for, for the emphasis is going to be on bottle to go, but we do have a wines by the glass list, uh, and uh, same thing. Um, that we tend to make it a little bit more approachable to a you know a casual you know wine connoisseur. Definitely. I don't, don't want to have anything super weird that I have to go into a huge explanation about. <laughs> yeah. I want people to be able to just so oh I, I drink this. Uh, but at the same time I've got a couple up there that are some you know cool blends that maybe someone if you saw it at a uh, kind of a casual dining place you'd go ah it's a blend it, it can't be that good. Yeah. But it's phenomenal, you know, and the price point's amazing. And so that's another opportunity to to educate somebody on something a little different. Like, hey, yeah, no, in your mind, you know, a blend may be thought of as inferior or, you know, less expensive or something like that, but there's some cool stuff that, that you can try by the glass too. So you mentioned a little bit earlier about this, this the downtown Huntsville's growth and where OTBX is in situation to everything else. I mean, just the, it's mm-hmm. continuing to expand, it's continuing yeah. to grow. Do you think that OTBX, where its location is, makes it be successful? Or do you think OTBX could be successful anywhere it, would, anywhere it wants to go? But having the downtown traffic of people walking by really helps OTBX and its uh, success. Um, I, I think a concept like OTBX could be successful just about anywhere. And I think that comes down to, number one, creating the atmosphere that we create, which is sort of downtown's neighborhood bar. Um, you know, it's a place you're going to come in and you're going to meet people and our regulars are going to try to find out who you are and what's your name and you're now our friend kind of thing. Uh, but certainly as, um, as downtown physically expands, uh, foot traffic can be everything. So uh, we're, 
we'll, we'll take uh, as many new <laughs> new people walking past our, our windows as, as they'll give us. Yes, and then like I, I think with the continued growth and like they said, the parking garage being finished, it's going to offer that retail option where people says like, hey, like their wife wants to go shopping, but they want to have a beer. They can come across the street and grab a beer. Uh, exactly, and uh, you know, I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, directly across the other way, uh, that particular gravel lot, they're breaking ground on that as well. Oh, wow. Uh, I think they did that. Uh, I could be wrong. It might have been uh, Tuesday. Okay. Uh, but that's going to be, uh, again, it's it's going to be a, um, a mixed-use building. First floor is going to be retail and then office space as well. So this whole little corner of, of downtown that was typically over the Almost years kind of, kind of quiet and, and it was kind of like, you know, you got to take the extra effort to walk <laughs> across the street Definitely. and go an extra block. It's now going to be more of a almost like a, a front and center. Yeah, it's going to be I, more of a destination. You know, people are going to think of the parking garage as like a place to park, and they're not going to realize that it goes right across the street. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's yeah. just going to continue to help the growth. Um, you offering a selection of people to be able to come in here and be able to find anything that they want on draft or in cans. How has how often do you all kind of curate your collection and change out drafts and change out what would you offer or do you all kind of keep it for a certain amount of time to offer consistency for the customer uh the, the quick answer is is daily and weekly i mean it's constantly changing um i you know i come in today is is a monday uh, as soon as we finish this up do inventory and i start calling my reps and uh and asking them you know what do we have this week what's gonna be cool what can I get my hands on um, on the flip side, I do, you know, especially on the draft side and the, the package, the canned beer side, um, I've got a couple that are just go-tos. I've got regulars that I know that they want it. So yeah. we'll keep that indefinitely. Um, but like I said, you know, we're, we're always looking. We're always looking Definitely. for that, that next cool thing that, that uh, you know, our clientele are going to appreciate us taking that effort and, and going and finding. So is your background originally kind of in this in, in the in this industry or has your has your love of this industry kind of grown over the over the years or is this something you've always been in? Uh, I, I actually spent the last uh, uh, gosh, 15, 16 years uh, working in the entertainment industry. I was in Los Angeles and Chicago. Um, and uh, so what that means, if you're not familiar with that industry, is that means I was in and out of this industry quite a bit. <laughs> um, that kind of uh, industry is, is very seasonally based. It's project based. You go work on this movie or you go to this play or whatever it is. And that's over and you've got to go make money until, you know, something else happens. Um, so um, so I've been in and out of, of the, the service industry for, for a long time. Um, and I jumped into the craft beer thing. Um, right when it was kicking off, because um, you know I know Alabama was was in the process of, of changing its laws, um, and there was certainly a a boom in the state and just a huge boom in Huntsville when that happened. But um, nationwide, there was kind of a boom too, um, and it was sh just shortly before Alabama you know uh, made the adjustments, and so I got into it pretty heavy yeah, about a decade ago, maybe a little bit less. Um, I was introduced to it uh, from a, a chef that I was working with um, who, I mean, he treated beer like, you know, some chefs treat wine. I mean, oh, it, it was wow. just with a reverence and it was part of the menu and it was designed to go with certain things. And uh, from there, I, I, you know, got into kind of collecting and then I got into, you know, home brewing. And so I've hmm. been in the beer scene in addition for, you know, about 10 years as well. Oh, wow. uh, and then when the opportunity came up about seven months ago to come here and take this place over, I jumped at it. I was like, well, this is kind of a little bit of everything I've, I've done over the last decade and a half. So do you think that your appreciation for kind of having that chef really kind of show, show you just how important beer could be and, and, and how pivotal it is into a, in, a meal and just the appreciation for it kind of helped further your growth and your development and what you do now and being able to inform customers when they come in just about what this beer actually is and the tasting you're actually seeing, but also being able to say, hey, this is, you like Blue Moon, you're probably gonna like this. A hundred percent. You know, back then I thought I was being fancy when I bought a Heineken, <laughs> right? Because it was European and it cost a dollar more. Yeah, you know? and you're just like, oh, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> right, that was, that was uh, this is, you know, a night on the town. <laughs> um, and uh, I just had no world, of, uh, no idea that this other world ex existed. Um, and the beers that we had at this particular bistro, I, I'd never seen them before. I didn't know what a, a Belgian was. I didn't know what a pale ale was. This, this is just, you know, weird to me. And, um, you know, of course, he started me off with some standards, again, like pails and IPAs and that sort of thing. And it was just too much. I was like, how does anybody drink this? Um, and then he turned me on to some Belgian triples, which were, uh, you know, kind of lighter, a little more effervescent, not hoppy, not bitter, not, not too in your face. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is like no other beer I've ever tasted. 
And then that leads to sort of that self-education that like there's this whole new world that I'm not aware uh, aware of. Um, and it can be treated with, with a certain amount of reverence for the craftsmanship that goes into designing uh, a recipe. And that you can, you know, go to a fine dining restaurant and you shouldn't feel guilted into, you know, ordering a, a you know, hundred dollar bottle of wine to feel fancy. Yeah. You, you can pair, you know, certain beers with, with you know, a Michelin star chef meal and it's perfectly fine, you know? And I, I, I think it's kind of an interesting thing because, I mean, Huntsville itself is not necessarily, I mean, a, I mean, five, six years ago, there wasn't a craft beer scene. It was right. just kind of, you went to your gro- lo- lo- local grocery store and you got what they had. Yeah, And exactly, then there was yeah. a few different, like, I mean, straight, straight to Ale's been brewing here for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been a couple other ones in Madison that have been here for a while. But over, over the last three or four years, we've had a half a dozen or more pop up. How has people when they come into how has the customers when they've come into OTBX kind of even been more informed themselves just because the craft scene in Huntsville is just so much more prominent than it was well and that's the thing is you know people I think people think that well you know this person's your competitor or whatever and and I mean I guess it is you know because you're um, you're competing for people's you know entertainment budget right and we got so much money to spend on a weekend you know to go out and do something but the truth of the matter is is it's a very symbiotic relationship um Huntsville's got so many breweries and so many fantastic breweries and bringing in more talent every day, you know, as, as new head brewers or, you know, you know, that sort of thing that the public is, is really well educated. And I think, you know, I wasn't here other than to come home and visit for Christmas and that sort of thing during that time period when it was first kind of popping off. Mm -hmm. But absolutely. I mean, you, you've got people who really know their stuff. I've got customers that, have never worked in the service industry a day in their life and they've got their Cicerone certification, <laughs> which, you know, if you're not familiar with that, if you're not familiar with that, Cicerone is sort of, um, uh, it's kind of like the sommelier for, uh, for beer. Okay. okay. So it, it, you know, there's, uh, several different levels and each level kind of, uh, tells people that you've got a certain level of mastery, uh, on the subject. And then, again, I, I've got people who, again, have never waited a table, never attended bar in their life. They come here and they've got a Cicerone certification. Just because they have a passion for them. Exactly. Yeah. And I think um, I think the scene in Huntsville has definitely fomented that. That it's like, hey, listen, this is actually a really cool town. There's some really cool stuff going on with beer, and people really feel comfortable getting on board and and participating in that, not just consuming. How important is it for your uh, bartenders and people that work here to have those certificate, like those like certificates, to show that they next that they have expertise in this? Is yeah. that something that your that your guest kind of uh, appreciate and is that something that OTBX as a, as a brand and as a company really appreciates and wants to have their bartenders have that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, you know, I've had one guy tell me straight up, he's like, I really appreciate you guys doing that. It, it's it's just kind of a cool little extra thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we kind of have a uh, uh, an incentive uh, set up so that when we do a new hire that it, it's encouraged to at least start studying it, start mm-hmm. getting ready for the exam. Uh, you know, level one's not too ter- terribly hard. Um, but, um, you know, that's something we want is, is to try to, and we've got to, you know, give some people some time to get up to speed when they, when they are freshly hired. Definitely. Uh, but, uh, to have it like, listen, this is what you're, what you're getting when you come in here is you're getting at, at least this level of knowledge, uh, in the, uh, in the staff. No, and I, I think that's like the, that appreciation for just the, 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 the appreciation for the beer, the appreciation for the wine yeah. and the appreciation just to have a staff that is well knowledge and, um, in all aspects. I mean, I coming in here, I, I've been in here a few times. It's it's definitely can continue to become more as I as I, as I move into like the five points area. But I think I think it's just like you come in here and it's a it's a welcomed atmosphere. I mean, there's plenty of space for you to spread out, especially for COVID. I mean, like you're you're, yeah. you're not you're not close to each other and you yeah. can be able to enjoy really great beer, or you're just like, hey, I want to stop by on the way home and pick up some six pack they have that I can only get here, or that is a great it's on my way home, or it's convenient right. and it's this down to home, down to earth bar that's in your neighborhood. I mean, it's, it's right. just like that fr- family friendly place. <laughs> and, and, um, you know, one of the things that we, we implemented about three months ago, I think is we, uh, we kind of looked around town at some people who are doing things similar. Um, and all of our packaged beer is available as singles. Okay. And that sounds like kind of a sales gimmick, but ultimately it actually goes back to, we want people to, um, to experiment. We want people to try new things. And it's a little intimidating because there, I mean, some craft beer is expensive. Definitely. And you look at a, a four pack that's $22. You may not jump in and try that new thing. So we wanted people to go, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll get one, you know, because someone recommended it to me. Yeah. I'm going to try it. 
um, and that's something that that's gone over really well. It's like you don't have to commit to you know a four a six four pack. packs, and, you know, just come in and grab one, grab one, and, yeah. And like I I, th I think that's I mean that's what I appreciate the most as someone that's just been able to kind of get into the scene more and more. Um, over uh, over I mean I, I turned twenty one last year. I'll be twenty two in a couple in a couple weeks. Um, but it's offering that ability to come in here and say hey. I like this or hey I like that and I can then just create my own six pack or create my own yeah. four pack that's something that is something that I like if I have one and I don't like it I only have one but yeah, if I exactly. have yeah but then sometimes you find that that beer you really enjoy and you're like I only have one of these and then you have to come back and get some more <laughs> yeah. but like I, I think that like and that's the and that's the scene it, it is it's, it's you're creating that like that repeat customer that's able to come in here and say hey they had this one beer that I tried I didn't think I was gonna like it but I loved it and I came back and got a six pack Hundred percent, yeah. Um, so, w m kind of looking onward for OTBX and what the future holds for them. What do you? W what are some goals that OTBX has in exp in reaching the Huntsville community and being able to be that pivotal place for people to hang out and have great tasting beer at the same time? Um, yeah, you know, we've got short term and long term goals, and certainly uh, short term, it's uh, uh, being patient with the uh, the construction <laughs> and COVID. Um, you know, we're we're really excited. Today actually is the first day that uh, Group One B starts getting their vaccines. I got mine this morning, um, and uh, you know that's. The people that are involved in in, uh, in 1B, uh, some of that is the food service workers. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's going to be sort of the first kind of jumping off point where people are more comfortable going out um, and uh, uh, going to places where there might be people they don't know. Um, so the short term, you know, for sure, it's just a it's a it's a patience game that that everybody in this industry is is dealing with. Uh, long term, I think the opportunity really uh, is present with the the new construction on, on both corners and how this little space in downtown is going to be changing over the next probably six months. Um, I think uh, we certainly have uh, kind of no ceiling in terms of what we can expect uh, in terms of growth, just because, again, foot traffic. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be down in this area that have never taken the time to, to walk over here. Definitely. So we're, we're looking at it uh, in a way that we, we want to make sure we preserve who we are and preserve the brand and we, we're, you know, who we are. But but present ourselves to a whole new group of people Definitely. that are just not not even aware of us. And like I I, th I think like and I, th I think that's like kind of a, a funny interesting thing to me is that just y'all are so close to downtown, but also having two blocks away from the square, or three blocks yeah. it deters people to coming down here. It, and it's a psychological block. I mean, yeah. it's literally it's like, like oh, it's another... like oh, it's two blocks. It's a long way. <laughs> but really, it's like like streets seem like a long time in downtown when you're driving because it's all a lot of one ways but when you're walking it's a super it's yeah, a super yeah, yeah. quick trip and i think that parking garage and the continued development of downtown is just really going to further enhance that experience for otbx and continue to have more and more customers that are saying how long have you been here how long like, i never knew you were here and you're like we've been here six years yeah yeah and i, I think that's <laughs> and like and i think that's that that whole new audience is going to be informed of hey